dear students in this module i am going to explain about the census method and the sampling method information is collected from the entire population it is called the census method and if the data is collected from a part of the population it is called a sample survey say for example if you want to conduct a survey about the 10000 bank depositors so if you are collecting from all the 10000 depositors in that bank then it's called a census method but if you are collecting information from 1000 depositors in that bank then it's called a sample survey so if you come to the census method so sometimes census survey is preferred for example in the case of testing costly sophisticated instruments manufactured by a company or vehicles manufactured by a company they cannot go for sample testing they have to go for census because each and every vehicle when they are selling that it should be tested all that conditions have to be fulfilled so in that case census method only is preferred now sometimes sample survey is preferred for example if you want to check the life of electric bulbs produced by a company if you cannot test all that all the factories are using this from the manufactured lot they will take a lot and that lot they will check in detail if that is correct then they will assume that the entire lot is correct so they will use sampling method in manufacturing process if the population is large sample survey is preferred that is what i told you in the manufacturing companies always they prefer the sample survey so if the population is small census enumeration is preferred so that is the one classification usually we will see because population is small then we can go for everything and you can collect the information so census enumeration is preferred there now merits of census method it's free from sampling errors we will see some sampling errors that we are going to explain so this you have to remember that census since we are collecting information from all respondents there will not be any question of sampling errors then when the universe is small completeness and accuracy can be ensured 100 respondents you want to study in detail you can collect as much as information from them possible and you can do a detailed survey more accurate and reliable results you are collecting direct information you are meeting them directly so you can collect accurate information then intensive study is possible as much as possible additional questions additional information you can collect so it is intensive study is possible in the case of census method then demerits of census method more time is required more money is required more labor is required more resources usually census method government will do that or government agencies will do that and they will have the funding for that second point is not within the reach of ordinary researchers if an individual want to do a census survey covering 10000 people or even 1000 people it may not be possible third point is if the universe it is infinite if the units will be destroyed in the process of enquiry census method is not suitable i told you if you want to check what all the items produced in a factory everything you cannot check that one one lot you can check and the sample method only is possible there fourth point is if results are needed immediately census method is not suitable if you want to get immediate results sometimes companies want to change their advertising campaign then they cannot go for census method they have to get an immediate reply so they will get use for the sample survey sample customers they will take and they will take a decision immediately sample survey will give sometimes accurate results see all the manufacturing companies are following the sample method then that is also giving a proper accurate result so that means census method is not possible or not needed in certain cases now we are coming to sampling so that i told you if the process of extracting a sample from the population is called sampling 10000 respondents it is not possible to cover 10000 respondents as an individual so you are taking 500 respondents from that so how you are drawing that 500 from that population is called the sampling now second one is theory of sampling is based on two important theories first one is principle of statistical regularity and principle of inertia of large numbers so principle of statistical regularity the theory states that if the sample is taken at random from a population it is likely to possess almost the same characteristics as that of the population from a student crowd of 10000 students in a university if you take 500 students this 500 will resemble the same characteristics as that of the 10000 students in the campus so that is the principle of statistical regularity 
so it's important to use random sampling for statistical surveys we will learn how we are using the proper random sampling if you draw the sample properly you will get the accurate result then you can generalize the result with the population so if it's random sample it is possible to study the characteristics of the population by studying only a part of that so that is the importance of principle of statistical regularity now the second principle is principle of inertia of large numbers so this principle states that other things being equal larger the size of the sample more accurate the results are likely to be see for example in the population of 10000 if you are taking 100 as respondents it will not give you reliable information but if you are taking 1000 respondents the result will be more valuable so the more the sample size then more accurate the results will be so that is the second principle so this is because large numbers are stable as compared to small numbers so that is the importance of taking appropriate sample for taking any research now merits of sampling the first point is time required is less compared to census survey. Census survey you need more time, more energy, more resources, more people to collect the information. Whereas sampling you can do with within a short time. Then it is less expensive. The advantage is that you do not need much resources, much time, much energy. Expenses can also be reduced. The traveling expenses, going around and collecting the information. All this can be reduced in sampling. Then trained enumerators can bring in accurate result. So if you are going for an extensive survey, even if you are using sampling, we will train the enumerators accordingly. So they will collect the information in an accurate method. Additional information can be collected. So if you are training the enumerators properly, they will be equipped to collect additional information which can provide valuable insights for the research. So for some methods, only sampling method can be used. See, I told you about the manufacturer of electric bulbs. Every bulb, he cannot test that. Because if you use continuously using that, at the end of the that, you have to see that the bulb has got how many years of life, how many months you can use that. So every bulb, you cannot test that. So that is why we are using sampling method in the manufacturing process. Then organizing and administering the sample survey is easy. You can divide the work properly. Division of labor you can apply. Then the method of administering the survey is very simple in sample method. Limitations of sampling. If a sample survey is conducted without proper planning and execution, results may not be reliable. If the enumerators are not doing their work properly, this will not give you the correct information. Then services of experts needed for better results. You have to train the enumerators and supervisors. Then you have to train them properly and use their expertise in a better way. Then only you can get the better results. Third point, in some cases, only census method is possible. See, for example, the cars manufactured. The manufacturing company will check each and every car. So then only they can give it to the customer. So that's important. Some cases, sampling method is not possible. We have to go for the census method. Fourth point is, if sample is not drawn properly, results may be misleading. Sometimes researchers, what they will do according to their convenience. See, for example, if I am telling them to collect a survey about college students, so what they will go to the nearby college and they will collect the information. It will not be a reliable information. Now, sampling errors we are dividing into two. One is biased errors and second one is unbiased errors. So in the case of biased errors, errors due to wrong sample, estimation or analysis. So that is example, instead of simple random sampling, judgment sampling is used. See, I gave you that example. I am telling this research scholar to collect information about college students throughout the state. So instead of going to the correct information, what they are going, the nearby 2-3 colleges, they are collecting information. So it will not be a correct research. So it is not a correct method. Or if I am telling that, uh, collect an information about the spending habits of students. So they have their own judgment who spend more money. Only those students, they are collecting information. They are using their judgment. So the results will be misleading. These errors form a constant component of error that does not decrease in large population. See, the sampling itself, they made the mistake. That meaning, instead of collecting this correct college, they are going to their convenient college. That means, this will not reduce. So, how, however they collect the information, this results will be misleading. So, these errors are known as non-cumulative or non-compensating errors. So, this means, if you are taking a wrong sample, the results also will be misleading. Next one is unbiased errors. 
so unbiased errors these errors arise due to chance differences between members of the population included in the sample and not included so this i told you that i was doing research about my for my phd about the saving habits of households in kerala so i came across one respondent who is completely against the personal savings his view was that government has to provide the social security in his old age and he was completely against the saving concept he was telling that why india can't do that like a developed country so this is completely i have come across only one respondent like that so unbiased error you have to remember that these errors decrease on an average as the sample increases so in my 500 respondents i collected i came across only one respondent so this will not increase like the previous case here here only one or two cases we will see so these errors are known as cumulative or compensating errors one or two respondents are totally different from our objectives of the research it will not make any difference in the result non sampling errors so these errors are associated with the census survey so if you don't think that even if you are collecting the information from the entire respondents it will be completely error free in the case of census survey also errors are possible how these errors will happen these errors arise due to inappropriate methods of interview if you are going to a respondent and collecting information in a when they are not convenient for them to share the information it's not at the appointed time so this will not give you the correct information then lack of trained enumerators and supervisors the role the enumerators and supervisors are playing in a census survey is very very important so they have to go and collect the information in a proper manner they should be trained for that if the training is not correct then they will not give the expected result then errors in processing even if you collect the data you have to collect the data and you have to process it properly you have to tabulate it properly you have to present it properly all these are important in getting the accurate result then wrong observation so if you are making any wrong observation then also it can be a wrong error for the census survey if you are completely if you are your your own judgment about a respondent that sometimes it can be wrong information so you don't make your personal judgment whatever your respondent is communicating with you that information you have to take now reasons for bias in sampling so first one is wrong process of selection if you are collecting the sample in a wrong method then it will be a wrong result deliberate selection of a representative sample see i told you if you are asking about the high spending students in a campus you have your own judgment these are students sometimes it may not be correct also so you are using your own judgment in selecting the sample so that is another bias third one is bias in selecting a random sample this is the bias most of the researchers will do when you are asked to do a proper random sampling they will do according to their judgment their convenience so you will not get the expected result then substitution see your one respondent is not available whoever you are getting your friends or somebody family members you will put as a substitute they will not give the accurate information then non response sometimes the respondents may not be willing to give the information so this is another limitation then wrong data collection if you are not using the correct data collection if you are not filling the questionnaire properly if you are not asking them with the questions properly then you will not get the correct information then wrong data analysis if you are not using the statistical data properly statistical tools properly this can be another reason for bias in sampling now types of statistical units we are dividing into two one is units of enumeration and units of analysis and interpretation unit of enumeration is again divided into two a simple unit and a composite unit so in a unit of enumeration means that in the terms of which the subject is counted or measured so a simple unit denotes general meaning throwing light on the one attitude of the subject of investigation see if i'll talk about a student so that you will get an idea who is a student who is a leader who is a passenger so these are all examples for unit of enumeration a composite unit is framed by adding a qualifying word or a phrase to a simple unit and is generally a combination of two simple units if you'll see the example student leader or class representative then you are adding two units of enumeration to that so that meaning you are getting student leader or passenger miles these are examples for unit of enumeration 
Now we are coming to the last point of this module that is unit of analysis and interpretation. So unit of analysis and interpretation is that in terms of which things are compared, analyzed and interpreted. So results are compared for interpretation. The results of one university with another university, one class with another class. So this results can be compared. The tools used for analysis are ratios can be used, percentages, averages, coefficient, all statistical measures we can use for unit of analysis and interpretation. So this is what I want to explain in this module and happy learning with Dr. Alice Marnie. Thank you.